My part uh, to everybody, I'm Krista Varadula and Vice President of Evora at the moment and uh, chairing this session that I would like to describe as a policy session because we have representatives from, from science policy, academic policy institutions and I would like to invite the speakers to the podium. Uh, Jean-David Malot, yes. welcome. Martin Rahier and Dagmar Schumacher. Uh, all welcome. Thank you very much for taking part in, in this session. And um, as I said, I think you represent the policy sector in, in, in many ways. Uh, we've heard a lot about uh, gender balance, uh, declarations, declarations become participation. So what would you say what, on your part? What, um, what can you do to make declarations reality to get better gender balance in, well, on this occasion in, in, in the academia? So the, I don't know whether the, we go in this order that um, that's here, okay? Then I'd like Jean-David Malot to start. Thank you. <laughs> Mrs. President, Mrs. Vice President, Honorable Rectors and Vice Rectors, dear Directors, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great honor to be with you this morning. And I would like, first of all, to convey the apologies of our commissioner, Mr. Carlos Moedas, who would like to be here this morning. He told me to say a few words in the introduction because it's for him one of his key priority. So he was said not being here, but he told me, you have to be there, no choice. So it's a great pleasure for me to be here, not only because it was an order from my commissioner, but because it's one of the top priority of my directorate. I would like to uh, tell you that the European Commission is committed to promoting gender equality in research and innovation. It's part of the Commission's strategic engagement for gender equality, which applies to all EU policies for the period 2016-2019. I would like, first of all, to congratulate you for your engagement towards gender equality. Evora has an important role to, pay, to play sorry, in promoting the role of women in leadership position in the academic sector. Professor Gülsün Saglamer is living proof of how rectors contribute to promoting gender equality. During her mandate at the Istanbul Technical University, the number of women professors grew from 16 to 29. This is what leaders can accomplish. Gender equality must be a natural part of leaders' responsibility, as it is a priority of the European research area. It is pursued along three objectives. Equality in careers, gender balance in decision-making, and integration of the gender dimension in research and innovation content. You know it better than I do. Women tend to advance at a lower pace than men in their careers. Women also tend to be underrepresented in decision-making. It is the case in academia, and I'm glad that Evora is committed to change this. Encouraging trends are shown in the last ERA progress report of 2016. The proportion of women grade A rose from 19.5% in 2010 to 23.5% in 2014. The she figures, which is one of the documents which is the most downloaded on our website, show that the proportion of women heads of institutions in the higher education sector increased from 15.5% to 20.1%. When it comes to national boards, 28% of members are women and 22% are leaders. We are on the right track and we shall boost our efforts. The strategy put in place is slowly bearing fruits. What exactly are those measures that seek removing barriers in women's careers? How should universities adjust so as to be more gender equal? Globally, 
it's a matter of practices, culture, and efforts. The institutional change approach is adopted by a growing number of universities. It entails tracking the gender biases, acting to remove them, and assess the progress made. This is how gender equality plans are promoted in the European research area. It is an ongoing process in which the European Commission works hand in hand <coughs> with member states, associated countries, universities, and research organizations. Since 2011, 113 organizations benefited from European funding for implementing gender equality plans through 17 projects for about 40 million euros. Let me give you an example of changing practices through a gender equality plan project. The Sialuai University in Lithuania took part in the Integer project. The council election in this university were planned to take place during the project's implementation. Considering the complete absence of women in the council, the project developed a strategy plan to enroll women. Several activities were undertaken to empower female candidates to run from the council election. The Integral Partner established formal meetings with the highest management staff. It consulted university lawyers to identify the way to including women in the council. The partner included women in the preparation of the election regulation. It identified women candidates among candidates from the university representative according to criteria such as loyalty to the university and commitment to implement gender equality at the university. As a result, the proportion of women in the council increased from 0% to 36%. As I said before, it's about changing the practices and culture of universities and research organizations. There is no reason for women not to sit on boards. It is our common duty to review the rules, the written, but most importantly, the informal ones. Only with this type of change, we can become fairer and more equal. Leaders play a key role in this, in their commitment and active involvement. In addition to supporting organizations implementing gender equality plans, the European Commission has recently opened a call for proposal to establish a community of practice of research and practitioner centers experiencing gender equality in research and innovation. The overall aim is to share knowledge on institutional change and lessons learned to provide gender equality training. In our last year conference, Commissioner Moedash announced a new tool, the GEAR tool to guide universities in designing and implementing gender equality plans. The European Commission prepared this tool in collaboration with the European Institute for Gender Equality and with the support of JEPS project and the ERA stakeholders platforms. I'm happy to say that since its launch last autumn, more than 12,000 visitors consulted, consulted it. It's a very useful tool to get acquainted with gender equality plans. The tool includes many actions developed in universities. Some of them got further attention from the Council. I'm referring to targets. The Council conclusion of 1st December 2015 invited member states to set up guiding targets for full professors and for decision-making bodies. The European Commission, in collaboration with the Helsinki Group, is finalizing a guidance to facilitate their implementation. It updates the recommendation made in previous report with new insights from member states and associated countries. It gives example of national practices. The next step will be the, to consult the ERA stakeholders platform, and this should be finalized hopefully by the end of the year. Another point raised by the Council conclusion is the inclusion of a gender perspective in the dialogue with third countries on science and innovation. We are in this respect at the very beginning of a new era. The European Commission has recently included a gender point on the agenda of meeting with research authorities from third countries from Latin America. The Helsinki, sorry, the Helsinki Group with the Strategic Forum for International Science and Technology Cooperation has launched, therefore, a survey on gender aspects in international cooperation, which will be followed very soon by guidelines. As you can see, we, are st we still have more progress to make. As Carlos Moedas said some days ago, 
I look forward to a future where equality is the norm and not the goal we are still striving to attain. Let's hope that this future is not so far. Through our joint efforts, we can achieve the change we want. I trust that as leaders of universities and research organizations, you will make your voice heard in research and policy making here and at home. I wish you a very successful conference.